みなさん、こんにちは。ダグです。クルージャパンパーキャストへようこそ。Hello, I'm Doug and welcome to the Crew of Japan Podcast, a weekly podcast where we take you on audio journeys through Japanese culture. This time on Crew of Japan Podcast. Crew of Japan Podcast を聞いてくださってありがとうございます。Thanks for listening to the Crew of Japan Podcast. And let me just apologize in advance for the bad attempt at Japanese that's about to go down. As we promised earlier in the season, in our episode 18, we're bringing you the Japanese version of our interview with the Japanese Academy Award winning director, Eiji Uchida. Yakusoku no Tori, Nihon Academy Sai Yushu Sakahin Shou Ju Shou Kantoku no Uchida Eiji san to Nihongo Ban no interview des. Kono episode wa Nihongo to Ego de Hoso Shimas. This episode is going to feature the full length English and Japanese portions of the conversation between myself, Eiji Uchida san, and our translator, Yumi. Whether you're a first time listener, a native Japanese speaker, or maybe someone who just wants to challenge themselves by listening to a little bit more Japanese and seeing what they pick up, I hope you enjoy this interview and conversation with Eiji Uchida san about his life and his career. Uchida Eiji Kantoku no Seikatsu to Kariya ni Tsuite Hanashi o Tanoshin de Kurasai. Let's go. All right, welcome back to our podcast. And today we have a very, very, very special guest with us in Japan, actually, right now. The award winning director of、uh, the film Midnight Swan. We have Eiji Uchida. Crew Japan Podcast でようこそ。今日はポッドキャストに来てくださって皆さんどうもありがとうございます。今日は日本から素晴らしいゲストの方、えー、あのミッドナイトスマンとかその他素晴らしい作品でいろんな賞を、えー、受賞されている、えー、内田裕二さんに今日はゲストとしておいでいただいております。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。Let's start. Usually we just have question and answer. We've prepared some questions today. And feel free to answer however you like. And we can go from there. So, our first question is、uh, before we go on to the main topic of film and the film industry in Japan, we like to ask our guests to share their connection to New Orleans if they have one. Have you been to New Orleans before? If so, what's your favorite memory? And if you haven't, what is the first thing you think of when you hear New Orleans? えー、まずあの内田さんにですね映画関係の素晴らしいお話を伺う前に、まあ、オープニングとしてもしニューオリンズにおいでになったことがあるかどうかでもしおいでになったことがあるのであれば、まあ、どんな思い出があるかそしておいでになったことがない場合はニューオリンズと聞いて最初に思い浮かべるそれは何でしょうはい、えー、っとニューオリンズはですね、えー、残念ながら行ったことがないんですがあのーそうですね。アメリカへ結構いろんなとこ行ったんですけど、ニューオリンズは未だ行ったことがなく、ぜひ行きたい街だなって昔から思ってはいたんですが、あの、まあ、ニューオリンズと聞いて考えるのは、まあやっぱり音楽なんですかね。あのジャズとかブルースとかっていうイメージはやっぱりすごく強いのと、あと、10年ぐらい前に日本の番組で、あの、ジャズドラマのおばあちゃんがニューロイ、ニューオリンズに、まあ、お孫さんと行くっていう、ね、番組があって、それを結構日本人多く見ていて、やっぱそのイメージも強いのかもしれないですね。なんかおばあちゃんがドラムを叩きに行った街。So, first of all, unfortunately, I never had opportunity to visit New Orleans yet. I have traveled many places in the United States, but not yet New Orleans. But I had long wished to visit that, you know, wonderful city. <笑> And then, of course, the image I have、uh, toward New Orleans is music is the first thing coming in my mind jazz, blues, of course. And also, actually, about 10 years ago or so, there was a Japanese TV program about the grandma who plays the cool drums. And she traveled to New Orleans with her granddaughter. And she had an opportunity to play drums in a very well known music club in, in New Orleans. So that was a very popular one. And so many Japanese people watch e d that. The, uh, program. So that was another image I, I come up in my mind when I heard the word New Orleans. What, what is the name of the show, if you don't mind me asking?、Uh, so、uh, uh, 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 u
。あんまり覚えてないんですけど、日本テレビっていうね、あの、日本テレビという会社の、えー、と、明石家さんまさんっていうタレントが司会していた番組名はちょっと忘れたんですが、あのー、もう10年ぐらい前の番組ですね。あ,あ、実はその、話を映画化したくて、あの、テレビ局に問い合わせとかしたことあるんですけど、なかなかちょっとうまくいかなかったんです。I forgot the exact title, but that was part of the program by 日本テレビ、um, broadcasting company, and I believe the very famous a k a s h i a s a m a was、uh, hosting that program, and it's a very well known one. Actually, it's kind of behind the stories there.、Uh, I really like that story, so I wanted to make it a movie out of it. So I actually talked to the director of the program. Things didn't go well as I expected, but that's the connection I have. Wow, that's,、uh, I'll have to look that up. I, I'm, I'm interested to know what the name of it is and maybe watch it one day.、Um, actually, I know exactly what it is. I can、oh, send you、okay. a link. Sounds good. <laughs> It's available on YouTube. I know, 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 Um, and this one's kind of just a it's self introduction. Who is Eiji Uchida? What inspired you to pursue a career in film? And being born and raised in Brazil until the age of 11, how did that, how did your life experiences carry over into your works? So, first of all, Eiji is a little bit of a question. I'm going to talk a little bit about the question. まずあの、まあ、ブラジルで、ね、あの11歳まで生まれ育たれたっていうことで,で、まあ、それがこうやっぱり自分の作品などに何かの形で影響している反映されているというふうに思われますかあとそれからあのエイジさんご自身がです、ね、映画の道を志,される志すことになったきっかけあとそのカメラの前ではなくてカメラの後ろにいる人になりたかったその理由なんかそう教えていただければありがたいです。はい。えっ、ー、と、そうですね。まず自分の生い立ちが自分に影響を与えたかなんですが、まあ僕はブラジルのリオデジャネイロっていうところで、生まれてから11歳まであの暮らしていたんですけど、あのー、まあやっぱり周りは、その、まあ黒人のコミュニティが多くて、まあ学校も、あの日本人学校ではなくて現地の学校にあの行っていたんで、あの友達のほとんどが、あのブラジル人っていう中でやっぱり育ったんで、まあそれはやっぱり今もものづくりに影響していると思います。まあむしろ日本に帰ってきてからの方がいろいろ戸惑う部分が多かった。So, as you said, yes, I was born and raised in、uh, Rio, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil until up to 11 years old. And so I was living in a community where、uh, many of the populations were black people. And I didn't go to the Japanese weekend school or anything. Basically, I was going to the local school. So I was, I was among the old Brazilians. So that was my, my natural environment. So、um, that definitely、uh, made some kind of impacts to my life. But actually, after I moved to Japan,、uh, there are more culture shocks, sort of, that has a little confused or、uh, didn't have a clear understanding what's going on in my life. 特にですね、まあやっぱり、まあ僕は日本企業の勤めてた父親の会社の関係で行ってたんで、比較的、なんて、ね、安全な地域に住んでいたんですが、やっぱり一歩出ると、とてもこう暴力的で、貧困にまみれた、やっぱり、ファベーラと呼ばれるね、その、スラム街ですけど、一歩、もう本当数分歩くと、やっぱりそういう街に、があったんで、やっぱりちっちゃい頃から、なんか両極端な、その世界観っていうのは、なんか見て育ったような気がします。So, I was、uh, living in Brazil because of my father's、uh, job, because he was working for a Japanese company. So, I, my living、um, situation was quite、uh, fortunate、um, in kind of safe area. But、uh, just a few minutes away from my community, there are slam,、uh, very, you know, not really safe, kind of violent type of community. We're right there. So I have experienced that very two extreme environments from I was very little. 
So that was also another interesting experience in my life living in Brazil. なんでまあ日本っていうのはねご存知のようにとても平均的な社会を目指すあの国のスタイルなんでやっぱりあのそういう部分のいい部分とまあやっぱり良くない部分みたいなものはすごく子供の頃から感じていてまあそれはやっぱり映画には反映されていると。So, as you know, Japan, Japanese society is always looking for average, being somewhere in the middle, the same as others. That's the kind of tendency of Japanese society is always look for. So, it's very different from where I came from. And so, looking at that society, I could see the good sides and bad sides. And so, that, that also definitely a big part of my life. で、二つ目の質問が、とそうですね、俳優になりたいっていうのは一回も思ったことありませんね。えっと、むしろ、カメラの前には絶対立ちたくない。<笑>という、もう後ろ、後ろが、あの、居心地がいいっていう状態です。So I never ever in my entire life wanted to be in an actor. I, want, I didn't ever want to be in front of the camera, actually. But I feel much more comfortable being behind the camera. That's where I want to be. カメラの前に立てというんだったら多分なんかこの映画の仕事を多分やめるかもしれないくらい苦手かもしれないですね。If somebody forces me to stand in front of the camera, I will even think about quitting <laughs> that much. I don't like it. Me personally, I am not an actor myself, so <laughs> I couldn't do the in front of the camera work either. I, it's just not for me. 僕もどっちかっていうとカメラの前にいると。いや、嫌だなっていう気持ちになっちゃうタイプなので、よくわかります、その気持ちは。あの、昔、インドネシアの映画で、あの、たまたま、あの、見学していたら、あの、インドネシア人の監督に、ちょっと日本人役で出てくれって言われて、まあ、インドネシアだったら誰にも見られないし、あの、一回やってみようと思って、俳優を一瞬だけやったことあるんですけど、やっぱり二度とやりたくないなってその時思いました。<笑> So a little、uh, while ago, I was actually watching the Indonesian movie. So the、uh, director was asking me, like, can you play a little role of Japanese person in a movie? And I was like, well, it's in Indonesia. Nobody's going to really watch it. So maybe it's okay. So I did very few seconds and, and I really didn't like it. It really made me confirm that's not what I want to do at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's funny. That's great. So, which directors have influenced your approach to directing movies? Who has inspired you the most? Is it like directors like、uh, Mizoguchi Kenji, Teshigahara Hiroshi, or Ozu Yasujiro, or any other directors out there、uh, that may have inspired your work? じゃあ,あの先ほどちょっとあの言っていただきました監督としてのアプローチに最も影響を受けたなと思われる監督ですねあの日本海外問わずですけども溝口健二さんとかその田代原田博さんとか大津康弘さんみたいなその初期の日本人監督から受けましたかそれとももっと最近の映画監督とかそういう方から影響を受けましたかそうですねあの初期の日本の映画の監督監督の作品はまあもちろん見てるんですけど、まあ、どちらかというとアカデミックなまあ感じで、まあ、勉強として見るという部分が強かったと思います。僕が影響を受けたのはもうちょっと後半の70年代以降の,あのいわゆる東映とか日活というアクション映画なんですかね。アクション映画の、えー、深作金次監督ですとか、あとえー、一番影響を受けた日本人の監督は、90年代に入ってからの、まあ、北野武史監督が大きいと思います。So, of course, those wonderful、um, producers and directors from the early era of Japanese movies, I, I've watched them all and they, they are so great. I watch them more like,、uh, like to study or learn something from them because、um, kind of academic、um, subjects sometimes. I was more influenced by those、um, directors and producers from the 70s,、uh, like Atoei or Nikatsu, those movies, a lot of actions and different t y p e of subjects. And also, of course, Fukasaku Kenji is one of the great、uh, directors I was influenced. And the more I was influenced from the 90s, Kita no Takeshi, he, he was the one of the top o n e I was so influenced from. I wish、uh, one of our other hosts is a really big. 
fan of Japanese film and wish he could have been here today. But, uh, you know, we he he would have loved to hear and get some more opinions from you. So uh, maybe next time uh, we can <laughs> do another one and you can kind of share thoughts. That'd be great. もう一人のハースホストの方が、あの、すごく映画に興味のある方で、ちょっと今日のポッドキャストは、あの、担当してないんですけども、多分、あの、内田英二さんとこんな風にお話ができるって、彼はもう、もう大喜びで、いろんな質問も多分あるだろうし、もっといろんなお話を伺いたいと思うと思うので、ぜひ、ぜひ、また、あの、この番組に出ていただきまして、彼とお話ししていただけたらとってもありがたいです。ぜひぜひ。Of course. Looking back at your career and up to this point, what do you think was,、uh, like, whether it was a film or a TV show or something you worked on, that was the turning point for you?、Um, and then sent your career in film on its current upward tra- trajectory. So, I think this is the most important part of the career. I think this is the most important part of the career. I think this is the most important part of the career. I think this is the most important part of the career. I think this is the 天気になったなと思われるようなプロジェクトは何だと思われますかそうですね。いくつかあるんですけど、えっと、まあ僕は33歳まで、あの、出版の仕事をしていて、映画の仕事をしたことないんで、あの、とても遅く始めたんですが、まあその中で、えー、天気と言えるのは、えっ、ー、と、まあ、グレイトウルデッドという映画がありまして、えー、10年ぐらい前に撮った映画なんですが、あの、日本では全くヒットしなかったんですけど、<笑>あのー、映画祭にですね、初めて出した映画なんですね。それが世界で50カ国ぐらいで映画祭に呼んでもらって、あのー、上映されました。そこから、あのー、まあ、比較的国際映画祭に、ま、呼ばれるように、あのー、なってですね、あの、アダム・トレルというイギリス人のプロデューサーと、あの、映画祭で知り合って、まあ、そ、それ以降は、まあ、今の映画作りになったっていうことで、まあ、10年前のグレイト・ウルデッドがとても重要な転機になりました。その次が、えー、っと、まあ、ネットフリックスのネイキッド・ディレクターですかね。えー、っと、まあ、あの、作品をやって、まあ、映画作りの環境がだいぶ変わったというのがあります。なその二つでしょうか。So I was in actually publishing a business until 33 years old. So my career in the filming industry started kind of late. About 10 years ago, I produced a movie. It's called Grateful Dead. And in Japan, actually, it was Really, not doing the business wise、uh, well at all. But somehow we were、uh, invited to show the movie at the international、uh, movie festivals. And then at the end,、uh, the movie was shared in over 50 different countries. And that gave me a really great opportunity to explore in different worlds. So that was one of the top ones that gave me a lot of turning points. And another one is、um, in those, one of those international、uh, movie festivals, I had an opportunity to meet、uh, English. Producer is called、um, Adam Toro, and he and I became a very interesting relationship, and that gave me another opportunity to have a different kind of turning point, and it really changed my movie filming environment of my life. So, those two,、um, as、uh, the, the naked director, was definitely influenced by that、uh, meeting with the those different people at the international movie、uh, film festivals. So, the, the day Grateful Dead. And the、uh, um, naked director from Netflix, those two were the turning points of my life. I actually really want to watch the naked director on Netflix. It's on my list of shows to watch. I have a long list, a lot of shows I want to watch on Netflix, but、uh, that's definitely one of them,、uh, especially after talking with you today. I definitely want to watch it now. いや、あの、今おっしゃってくださった映画はですね、僕が絶対ネットフリックスで見たいと思っている映画のリストの中にもうトップに入っているものなので、もう今日このようにお話を伺って、それがあの、内田英二さんの天気の一つになったとおっしゃってるのを聞いたら、もう絶対見なきゃっていう気持ちになりました。<笑> Thank you. ありがとう。<笑> one of your most well-known works was one of your more recent projects, Midnight Swan. Uh, in 2020, Midnight Swan won Best Film at, at the Japanese Academy Awards, and you were a nominee for Best Director. 
for those films and those who in our audience may not be familiar with it, could you give us a short description of Midnight Swan and let our listeners know what it's about? あの最近に監督された作品で特にやっぱりあの有名なものとしてそのミッドナイトスワンがやっぱり挙げられると思うんですねあ2020年ですしでその年には日本アカデミー賞を何もにも取られたり作品賞とか取られたりあと監督賞にもノミネートされましたよねあの本当にさまざまな賞を受けられた素晴らしい作品ですけれどもあの海外の方でまだご存じない方もいらっしゃるかもしれませんのであの内田さんの口からこの作品を少し紹介していただけないでしょうかはい。えっ、ー、と、僕の最新作で、えー、2020年の9月に日本公開された映画、ミッドナイトスワンなんですけど、まあ、今もまだ、あのー、東京の映画館では、あの、ロングランで上映されてます。えーどういう映画かと言いますと、あのー、まあ、トランスジェンダーのですね、あのー、女性と、まあ、ちょっと孤独な、あの、バレエダンサーの少女と、あの、共同生活を描いた、まあ、とてもシンプルな映画でございます。Yes, that's one of the、uh, very recent、um, movie that I produced, and that was actually、uh, became in public in September 2020. And it's still actually、uh, showing at some of the theaters in Tokyo area. So it's a kind of long run. And so the movie is about a, a woman who is a transgender and the,、um, the relationship with her and the very lonely、um, young girl who is a ballet dancer. So that's the simplest way I can explain about that movie. Is the film available to international audiences? Once I heard of it, it sounded interesting to watch. I really wanted to watch it. But has it gone overseas to theaters or is it planning on coming out anywhere on like streaming applications or anything like that? とても興味のある内容ですし、できればこちらにいる人でも見たいなと思う人は私の他にもいっぱいいらっしゃると思うんですけれども、このミッドナイトスワンが何らかの形で海外で。あの見ることができるようなあのそういうチャンスというのは障害的にあるのでしょうかそれともあの何らかの形で今こう見ることができるようになるというプランはあるのでしょうかそうですねあの日本多分日本のアマゾンだけでしか使用できないんですけどあの英語字幕の入ってないあのバージョンっていうのはあのアマゾンプライムで日本だと見ることができます。で、それ以外の部分ですと、まだ、え、え、あの、ハワイ、ハワイ映画祭ですとか、イタリア、台湾などの映画祭でまだ上映をこうしてるんで、もうちょっとしたら、あの、海外向けにリリースされるんじゃないかと思います。Currently, I'm、uh, on Amazon Prime in Japan.、Uh, they can watch this movie, but it does not have a、um, subtitle, English subtitle yet. But at this point in Hawaii、um, movie, movie、um, festival in Italy and Taiwan, they are still showing this movie. So I see the big possibilities that that will be released in、uh, foreign countries sometimes in the future. In, especially in the world today,、uh, representation and diversity is a very important topic and, and has gotten a lot more emphasis, especially in the film industry. How important was it for you to give an accurate portrayal of a transgender person in Japan to a, a mainstream audience in movie theaters? Do you feel that the film helped raise some awareness for issues within the LGBTQ plus community in Japan? ね、今の世界の映画界っていうのは一体何を表現したいのかまたそのどういう重要多様性をこう映画の中で見ていくのかっていうことが非常に重視されるようになっていますけれどもその日本におけるトランスジェンダーの,あの人のこう生活というか生き様みたいなものをメインストリームの観客の方にこう正確に描写していくっていうことがこうとてもあの難しいことだと思うんですけど内田さんにとってこれはどれぐらい重要なことだったんでしょうかまたこの映画が日本におけるあの LGBTQ+ プラスのコミュニティが実際に今直面している問題に対するこの社会の認識というかそれを高めるのに役に立ったというふうにはお考えですかそうですねおっしゃられるように、えっと、世界の,、まあその映画の兆候がですねあのまあ、多様性という部分、一
点に絞られて、まあ、あのー、た、LGBTQ プラスも含めた映画作りがとてもいっぱいされています。で、じゃあ一方、日本の映画が、その潮流に乗っているのかといえば、あのー、乗っていないという現状があると思います。で、まあ僕は、そのトランスジェンダーのですね、方々のコミュニティとちょっといろいろ交わっていた部分もありまして、この映画を作ろうと思いました。えー、ただ、この映画をですね、いわゆる、いわゆるアートハウスの、あのー、一部の都市部、まあ東京、大阪、一部の都市部の、あの、数千人の人が見て終わる映画に、あの、したくありませんでした。えー、なぜなら、あのー、やっぱり多くの人が見て、あのー、どういうことが考えられるのかを、やっぱかちょっとか考えるきっかけになればいいなと、この映画が。なぜなら、東京とか大阪の、都市の若者や、あのー、一部の人たちは、この問題についてとても考えているんですが、日本全国という部分になると、やっぱり何も知らない人が多いんですね。なんで、考えるきっかけの映画として、やっぱ多くの人が見るエンターテインメント作品にする必要があるなと思って、撮影をした映画です。You're right. As you said,、um, the, these days, main flow of the movie industry is really talking about diversity. That's one of the top,、um, topic these days. And of course, there are so many movies involved in the LGBTQ+. Um, but in the meantime, when you look at the Japanese movie industry, is it really going along with that?、Uh, realistically, it's not there yet. So I have had some opportunity to be involved in a transgender community. And so I, I've seen with my own eyes what's going on. So I really wanted to、um, make a movie. But I didn't want to just make one something for just a limited number of people, you know, several thousand people watch it as a very artistic, special club kind of、uh, movie. s That's not what I wanted. I wanted to show it to as many people as possible to give them an opportunity to think about the reality that something they might not know yet, especially. Young people in、uh, Tokyo or Osaka, those big cities, they, they have more opportunity to be explored in that、uh, issue. So many young people seriously consider about this、um, you know, social issue. But when you look at the other area, unfortunately, still many people are not really aware what's going on or not even know there was a problem. So I really want to make this movie available. As part of entertainment that people want to watch it, so it can bring a chance for them to see the reality and think something, you know, just opportunity to think something. That's why I really wanted to do it. ただですね、やっぱりここまで、まあ、賞をいただいたり、あのー、まあ、その、講習、いわゆる工業収入の面でも、まあ、成功した作品になったんですが、こういう形になるとは僕も想像していませんでした。So this movie fortunately received so many great awards and awareness and it's actually beyond my expectation. I really didn't expect things to be happening like this and、um, this movie hit the market very well. It was beyond my、uh, expectation. So it was a nice surprise. まあそれでまあいろんな意見がまああの賛否含めていろんな意見があるんですがが、まあ、それはとてもいいことだと思ってまして、あのー、まあ、正直、トランスジェンダーという言葉すら知らない、あのー、人も多いわけですね、日本は。なんで、あのー、やっぱり外国と違って、まあ、第一歩を、あのー、みんなで考えようという部分に、あのー、立てた作品になったなとは思っています。Because this movie became very popular, I received so many different opinions and comments about this, good and bad,、uh, some agreeable, something disagreeable, and I think that's great.、Um, so, because there are some people out there don't even know the word transgender, they've never heard that word before. It's very different than the other countries about the situation. 
I was kind of hoping that movie was able to make the first step for everybody to, to learn something and then think about this. It's fantastic. And I agree. I think、uh, that representation and、um, having that in、uh, mainstream film、uh, is one of the main medias that people absorb, you know, watching movies on TV or Netflix or in the movie theater.、Um, and being able to see that and maybe in a way they would no, not have expo- been exposed to it before is important, I think, just to see and be aware of issues that are different from your own and things that people are going through in their own lives. That are very different from what that individual is experiencing. So that's, that's fantastic. I really, really appreciate it myself. I know, I'm going to say that 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 I'm 違う生活をしている人がいるんだということをあの見るきっかけになったっていう自分と違う人生を送っている人がいるんだという知ることを知るきっかけになったと素晴らしいことだと思います本当にありがとうございますそうですね日本はねあの世界で一番いわゆるアートハウスの映画館が多いんですけど小さい映画館が多いんですけどあのまあそういう映画館でもたくさんかかりましたし。いわゆるシネ,シ,シネーマーコンプレックスでもすごくかかりましたし、結果80万人ぐらいの日本人が、まあ、あの映画を見ているんで、あのー、いろんな感想をもらって、こう考えますと。私はこう考えますと。やっぱそれがすごく重要だなと。やっぱ考えることがやっぱ重要だなと思,思っていたんで、あの、とても、あのー、一年半経ちましたけど、あの、やっぱりそういう情報に日本人は飢えているんだなと思った映画でありました。In Japan, actually, we have very big numbers of the small theaters called outhouse. We do have an opportunity to show that movie in many of those outhouse. And of course, they played at the big cinema complex in a huge movie theaters as well. So, I believe about 800,000 audiences had the opportunity to watch that movie, and it's been about a year and a half or so since it was released. So, of course, as I said earlier, I received so many different opinions and comments, like some people think this way or that way. And I think that's really, really important that they think something watching this movie. That was totally I, I was really looking for. So, and I also I could tell Japanese people were seeking something, that kind of opportunity to learn. That's great. And again, we were talking a lot about the social issues in the movie itself, but it sounds like there's a lot of everything else as well. Like you can get a good image of like the Shinjuku area、uh, and understand what life is like in there. I've been to Shinjuku、uh, countless, I can't count how many times I've been to Shinjuku.、Uh, and I know that feeling of chaos and, <laughs> and how the nightlife can get in Shinjuku. So I'm sure seeing it on like big screen would just help me kind of bring me back to that area and feel, especially in a time when we can't really travel. You know, feel like we're in Shinjuku in that area and enjoy, you know, the, the movie and all the stories that come with those characters. そうですね。本当にあの最近やっぱり LGBTQ を扱った映画っていうのは多いんですけれども、あのこのミッドナイトスワンはやっぱり今おっしゃったようにその新宿のこうごちゃごちゃっとした熱さみたいなものがやっぱりとても感じられて、あの僕も新宿に何度も行くチャンスが今まであったんですけど、この映画をスクリーンで見てるとあの時のあそこにいた時の感じがこうまざまと感覚として戻ってくるっていう雰囲気がすごくありまして、えー、またあのあの新宿にあの熱い感じを感じたいなっていうような気持ちにもなると思います。ただですね、撮影は新宿でほとんど撮っていないです。<笑> But to be actually show you some behind story, the filming was not done most of the parts not in 新宿。新宿がですね、あの国が指定している撮影禁止区域になってまして、あの。いわゆる歌舞伎町と言われる中心部ですね。あそこは撮影ができないんですね。で、プラスして、まあ、ご存知のように新宿はその、ヤクザのね、皆さんがとても多いあのエリアでして、あの、勝手に撮影をしてると、あの、とてもトラブルになることが多いんで、結構新宿ではなくて、あの、横浜とか、あの、新宿に似たいろんな
、あの、街に行って撮影をしました。Behind the story, Shinjuku area, especially the main Kabuki Cho area, are actually prohibited to do filming by the government. So there's a very strict restrictions out there. And also, Japanese Yakuza, you know, gang members,、um, there are quite numbers of、uh, gang members、uh, working around the area. So, if we just do the filming without their permission, we could be in trouble you know, easily. So, we had to film somewhere h a d a similar、uh, color、uh, as Shinjuku. So, sometimes we did it in Yokohama and a few other areas. Yeah, you don't want to make the、uh, Yakuza mad. Yakuza is not going to be mad. Yeah, Yakuza is not going to be mad. Yeah, Yakuza is not going to be mad. Yeah, Yakuza is not going to be mad. まだまだ。<笑> yeah, it gets a little, little better under the control because of the Japanese police restrictions, but still they're out there. So, yeah, we have to be careful. Well, I, I can't wait to watch、uh, Midnight Swan, whether it's when I travel to Japan and visit friends and family and can watch it on their Amazon Prime account there, or you know, maybe if it comes overseas,、uh, whether in a movie theater or on streaming services, I can't wait to give it a watch. あの日本に行ったら絶対あの友達とかと一緒に Amazon プライムであの見せていただきたいなと思うのですがもしかしたらその前にこうして海外で、えー、見るチャンスもあるかもしれませんのでそれを楽しみに今からいつか見せていただきたいと思っていますはいぜひ来てほしいです、yes. <笑> Well, speaking of、uh, streaming services, recently, over the last few years,、um, like Netflix and other, and Hulu and things like that, have begun to heavily feature movies and TV shows from Asia, specifically Korea and Japan. Does your approach to writing and directing change knowing that some of your work will be more geared towards an international audience instead of, you know, just only Japanese audience? まあ、あの本当にここ数年、ネットフリックスとかあと Hulu とかですね、あのストリーミングサービスが本当にあのいろんな形で提供されるようになってきまして、アジア、特にやっぱ韓国とか日本とかの,あの映画とかテレビ番組がもっとたくさんの,あの方に見ていただくチャンスっていうのが増えてきましたよね。であのご自分の作品がですね、より国際的にあの紹介されるまあ機会が本当に増えてきたと思うんですけれども、そういうふうに今までともっと違う、いろんな幅広い観客の方に自分の作品を届ける可能性が広がってきているということについて、例えば脚本を書かれたり、あの監督をされるにあたって、アプローチでやっぱり変化っていうのはありましたでしょうかそうですね。あの、とても大きな変化がありまして、あの、まあ日本の映画でよく言われるんですけど、あの日本で受ける、あの日本でヒットする映画は外国では受けない。で外国に行くアートハウスの映画は日本ではヒットしないっていう逆転現象がまあ日本で起こってまして、まあそれをどうするか多くの監督がね、あの頭を悩ませているんですが、あの、ネットフリックスの全裸監督、では、まあ、そのアメリカ人の脚本家も、あの、東京に呼んで、あの、チームで、あの、な、5人ほどのチームで、まあ、脚本作りをすると。で、こういう部分は外国に対して面白いだろう。こういう部分は日本人に面白いだろう。こういう部分は日本人にしか面白くないからやめようとか、まあ、そういう話し合いをしながら作ったドラマです。なんで、あのー、まあ、全裸監督っていうのは、まあ、そういった意味で、外国でも見れて、日本でも見れるっていう、なんていうんですかね、入り口に立った作品になったんじゃないかなと思ってます。So, yes, actually, there are big changes in the way I approach for filming. It used to be a really issue for Japanese movies.、Uh, if the Japanese particular movies are good for Japanese audience, usually it's not so、um, well accepted in the foreign countries, and vice versa. So that was always a point that America, the Japanese producers and directors always、uh, have to think about somewhere where we're going to draw the line. But because of Netflix and、uh, those streaming services, they really went beyond those borderlines easily. So, for example, for the、um, Naked Director series, we had a team story、um, making. Uh, so, we invited some of the script writers from America, and he joined that team. 
and we discuss okay what's good for japanese audience what's good not good for american you know audiences that's good for different countries audiences we were able to really openly discuss many great things so that really helped us to go um just kind of jump off the borderline that we used to struggle a lot so that was definitely a great change yeah and actually i was going to bring up the naked director next as one of those shows uh that came over from japan on netflix and i think i read that it was one of the first productions for japan's netflix branch first of all i'm not sure if that's accurate or not i think i saw that somewhere but also what was your role on the series were you the the main decision maker or where did you like you said you worked in a team was it more for writing or was i guess what was your role in the series and then what was your favorite part about that show in general あの実は次の質問でその全裸監督ですねネイキッドディレクターのことをちょっとお伺いしたいとちょうど思ってたんですけれどもネットフレックスといえばですねその日本でネットフレックスが紹介された、まあ、最初の制作が、ね、あのこのネイキッドディレクターだったというふうに伺ってるんですけれどもあのこのシリーズを、ね、見た方は本当にたくさんいらっしゃると思います。であの内田さんはこのネイキッドディレクターにはその脚本だけだったのかそれとももっといろんな形で関わられたのかあのどういう,こう役割を果たされたのかっていう点をかけお聞かせいただきたいということとそれからこの番組にの制作に携わってあのよかったなと思うような点がありましたらそれもご紹介いただけたらいいと思います。そうですねあのネイキッドディレクターはは僕はシーズン1しかあの携わっていませんけど全、まあ8入り、8話かな ?8 エピソードあるんですが、まあ、前話の、あの、脚本と監督が、ディレクターは3人いまして、まあ、そのうちの1人、まあ、脚本と監督をやったということですね。あの、2年ぐらい、撮影まで準備とか入れたら3年ぐらいかかった作品なんですけど、あの、まあ、確かにネットフリックスが、あの、日本、日本で広まるきっかけになった作品だと思います。よかったなと思う部分は、なんでしょうかね。まあでも特にないですかね。あのー、普通にいつも映画作る、同じ状態で作った作品なんですが、あのー、それまでは、あ、変わった点。それまではですね、10万ドルまあ日本円で1000万程度のスーパー低予算のインディーズ映画ばかり撮っていたんですが、あのー、まあネットフリックスの作品なんで、ね、その何十倍もの、予算があったんですけど、まあ、映画作りに予算はあんま関係ないんだなと思った作品でもありました。So I was involved in about eight episodes of the season one only.、Uh, so I wrote the scripts for all stories. And then I was one of the、uh, three directors、um, as a team. I think it was two years, more like three years, if you start、uh, count from the planning to、uh, completion of the filming of that season. That was actually the program. It made Netflix very、um, famous and, then, and popular in Japan. So that's really,、uh, in that case, it's a significant、uh, program. But I was approaching that、uh, filming as just as a normal as one of the, my work. You know, I didn't have any particular、uh, difference of my approach for that movie. But until then,、uh, maybe the budget for a, a movie making was about like $100,000 or so. It was a quite low budget. And with this Netflix, of course, it was like $20,000, $30,000. It's like it's a big, way bigger budget. And、uh, actually, I realized it doesn't really matter the budget to make a good movie or not. That was the realization after I finished that movie. So、again, like I said earlier, it's one of the shows that I really want to watch. And I, I've just reading the description of it, and it just sounds entertaining. I, I do have a, one other follow up question for you, if you don't mind. Is, I guess, like you said, it, it, you, you focus on the writing and the directing of it and treat it kind of similar, but is it easier for you to develop and, and write characters over a, a series than it is to write or develop a character within one movie? I guess, which do you like doing more? Is it more of a series type work, or do you like a small one film contained character development story? I know, Uchida san ni tote desne, sono tojo jimbuts no character zukri desne, sono kakuhon toka kakarere toki ni, kono naked director mitaina ko, series 
になる作品の役割、キャラクター作りと、それから一本の映画とか一本のドラマというふうにこういっぱい完結するようなタイプのものとですね、アプローチっていうのは違うものなんでしょうかそうですね。全く違うと思ってます。キャラクターもそうな、まあ僕はどちらかというとシリーズものはちょっと苦手だなと思ってるんですけど、あのー、やっぱり毎回、まあネットフリックスですとクリフハンガーという言い方しますけど、毎回その1話1話が終わるごとに、まあその次を見なきゃいけない、見たいとさせるようなまあ描写をしなきゃいけない。まあそれが、ね、エピソードが8話あれば8箇所。まあ、考えなきゃいけない。でも映画であれば、あの、そういったものは必要ないっていう部分で、あのー、やっぱり連続して視聴させるものと、まあ、一回、二時間見ればいいものっていうのはやっぱり全然、あの、まず見る姿勢が全然違うと思ってます。あと、やっぱりドラマ、シリ,シリーズものはやっぱり時間がかかりますね。<笑>あの、制作まで、あの、とても企画から、あのー、とても時間がかかるんで、やっぱ映画の方が早い部分があるんで、やっぱそういう部分でも、うん、やっぱ全然違うなと思ってます。ドラマ、シリーズものばっかりやってるとあっという間に年を取っていくっていう、あの、<笑>なんていうんですかね。時間が必要ですね。シリーズものはやっぱり。なんで若い人がどんどんやった方がいいんじゃないかなと思ってます。Actually, there is a big difference between those series type of work and a one story movie. I personally not really、uh, not much so fond of a series、um, program. And so, first of all, when you have to、um, film a、uh, series, you have to have a cliffhanger. You know, to, so, for example, the eight episodes, you have to have eight times the audience wants to. Watch next one. You know, you have to make that kind of scene to make sure they are curious to watch the next one. And in the movie, you don't really have to do that. So,、um, just two hours watching it and then enjoy the whole movie, and that's great. So, that's really a big difference to when you create the、uh, characters and writing scripts. And, and then also for series, it takes quite a long time from the planning. To the completion of filming.、Um, and then, if you involve a lot of those series programs, it makes you kind of old. <laughs> it takes a lot of time out of your life. So, I think more and more younger people should be more involved in the series movies. That's how I feel. One other show that you had worked on uh, recently uh, was、uh, Shonan Junagumi. And in high school, I like to read a little bit of manga here and there,、uh, the English translations. And one of the series that I read was Great Teacher Onizuka, GTO. And、uh, it was one of my favorite series ever, still to this day. I've, I've probably read it two or three times over the course of the last 20 years. When doing some research, I found out that you worked on the prequel series,、uh, Shonan Junagumi. So, were you a fan of GTO prior to working on the show? And、uh, if you were,、uh, who was your favorite member of the Onibaku group? あの実は私、高校生の時にあに、鬼塚大先生、GTO のです、ね、映画版がのあの漫画を手に取ってで、本当にあの大好きな漫画になったんですね。で、まあ、今回、内田さんにいろいろインタビューできるってことになった時に、その,その,、まあ、そのちょっと全作品になっているような湘南順安組の実写映画化のところで、内田さんが実は監督と脚本とか担当されたっていうことを初めて知りまして、もうすごくわーっと思ったんですけれども、あのこの湘南純愛組を実際に手掛けられる前からこの鬼坂大先生の,この漫画ですねとか、まあ、よくご存知だったんでしょうかファンだったとかそういうこともあるんでしょうかそれともあとあの鬼バックのですねあの2人とか、まあ、その出てくる他のメンバーでどのメンバーがお好きだとかそういうのはありますか<笑>まさかニューオリンズでねあの湘南純愛組の話が出るとは思いませんでしたけど。<笑><笑>とてもマニアックですね。I never thought that somebody in New Orleans actually talk about Jun- Shonan Junan Gumi with me. That's a nice surprise. <笑><笑>まあ僕がティーンエイジャーの頃、あのとてもほとんどのね、あの、高校生が読んでいる漫画でした。湘南中。GTO っていうのはその後にできたあの漫画で、比較的僕の
ジェネレーションだと、まあ、この湘南十和組がみんな大好きで、あのー、まあ、単なる、だからその漫画のファンであることから、まあ、その監督をやらせてもらったという形です。で、まあ、漫画の、その、藤沢先生、藤沢さんっていう漫画を描いてる、あの、先生にもお会いして、いろいろお話をして、あのー、もう、雑エンターテインメントとして、まあ、作ったドラマです。あの、まあ、ちょっとした、まあ、日本のその暴走族っていうね、あの、カルチャーの、あの、リエコさんもいっぱい知ってるかもしれませんが、<笑>あの、暴走族っていうカルチャーが日本にありまして、僕もそのブラジルから初めて日本に帰った時にですね、あの、その暴走族っていう人たちを、あの、学校で見たんですね。まあその時の衝撃が未だに忘れられず、あの、とても興味をずっと持ち続けて、それであのドラマにした、あの、漫画でございます。So when I was a teenager, almost all high school students,、uh, they love Shonan Juyangumi. That was a really biggest hit of the,、uh, the comics. Everybody loved it. So,、um, as a, one of the fan of the original manga, Uh, that's why I really wanted to be、um, uh, directing this movie. So I had an opportunity to have a great talk with the、uh, original creator of the manga, Fujisawa Sensei. And so we had、uh, so many great stories, and then we really decided to make it as entertaining as possible. So that's how the Shonan Junai Gumi、uh, movie came out. As you may know, in Japan, we have uh, uh, motorcycle riders.、Uh, it's called Bosozoku. They just do a lot of、um, chaotic s i t u a t i o n with interesting. Uh, modified motorcycles with a loud noise and speeding and, and very、um, breaking everything regulations on the streets kind of、uh, group of people. The、um, Shonan area was very well known with that、uh, group of people. <laughs> so、um, when I first came back to Japan from Brazil,、um, uh, where I was living, had those people driving around. And that gave me a great shock. So that was another reason that I wanted to make that movie. When I lived in,、um, when I lived in Fukushima Prefecture in Iwaki City, I visited some friends that lived on an, an area called Onohama. And in that area, it's right along the Pacific Ocean. And usually every night around 9 p.m. or so, Bosozoku. Ipai. Like, so many Bosozoku would come by, loud motorcycles. You'd hear them. I mean, they may not be close, but you could hear them as if they're right next to you. It was so loud. At my friend's apartment, we'd hear them all the time. So I, I know about Bosozoku definitely from that. あの日本にいた時にですねあの僕あの福島にいたんですけどもあのいわき市にいたんですけどあの友人が小野浜にいたので,であの、まあ、遊びに行くとですね太平洋に面したあの道の方とかをこう夜な夜な9時ごろになると盆相続がやってくるわけですよ。で友達の家はそんなに近いところじゃなかったんですけどもあの音がすごいのでちょっと。と離れてても、あ、来たっていうぐらい、本当にすごい大きな音で走り回ってましたから。あの暴走族っていうのは僕もよく、あの知ってます。<笑>まあ、あの日本の暴走族はね、あのヘルスエンジェルスとかと違って。あのティーンエイジャーじゃなくなった瞬間に、あのやめていくっていう可愛い<笑>。文化スタイルがあるんで、面白いですよ、ね。<laughs> Japanese posters look the, that motorcycle riders are actually very different than health angels. They are pretty much all teenagers. And once you hit adult, like 20, 21, they have to graduate. It's a very unique, you know, cultural stuff in Japan. It is very impressive. Most of them, once they hit 20 years old, they start to find a job and work very legitimate life. I... Don't know too much about Bosozoku culture, but I always found it is kind of interesting. And in GTO was kind of one of the first exposures to that that I had.、Um, and it's funny you brought up as Shonan Junai Gumi came out first and then GTO after. But、uh, here, GTO came out first. And then after it was kind of popular and successful, they eventually released、uh, Shonan Junai Gumi in English as well. Um, I haven't finished reading that. I have, I, I've read about 10 volumes of that. So I haven't finished it. And I don't, I just, I don't know when I'll have time 
with two children. <laughs> It's too hard. 僕、暴走族の,そのうるさいのは知ってますけど、そういう,こう大人になったら卒業していくというか、そういう文化まではまだちょっとあんまりよく知らなかったので、面白いなと思いますけど、この,あの GTO と湘南純愛組っていうのは、アメリカでは、とか海外では反対で、あのこう湘南純愛組が日本だったら全作品なんですけど、後から出てきてるんですね。であの僕はこの英語に直してる漫画を今読んでて6巻目まで来てるんですけどもうあのちょっと今子供が小さくて2人手がかかるのがいるのでなかなかそこから先10巻まで確かあったと思うんですけど読むチャンスがないのででもあのできれば時間を、ね、見つけて読みたいなっていうふうに思ってますじゃあ漫画家の藤沢先生に伝えときます。<笑> I will tell the original creator of the manga that there is a fan in New Orleans. Number one fan. Book <laughs> New Orleans, the one fan of the f a n of the fan. All right. Well,、um, I don't want to keep too much more of your time. So we have two, two short questions, kind of simple questions. The first one is、uh, you know, what is your personal favorite film genre, film or TV show to watch? じゃあ,あの時間もちょっとねあのだいぶ経ってきましたので最後はちょっとシンプルな質問をさせていただきますまず一つあの個人的にあの見る側としての立場だと例えば映画でも結構ですテレビでも結構ですけどどういったジャンルがお好きですか難しい質問ですねえっとあシンプルじゃないの<笑>シンプルじゃないシンプルじゃない<笑> Not simple <笑>何ですかねえっと、どういうジャンルが好きなんですかねもうとにかく北野武史がすごく好きでですね。あの、ジャンルではないですけど、武史北野の映画のような、なんて言うんですかね。昔のね、昔の北野武史の映画が好きなんで、ああいった、っていうんですかね。うん。なんかちょっとこう、なんかちょっと狂,狂気、普通の人間になんか芽生えた狂気的なものが描かれた作品っていうのは結構好きかもしれないですね。That's really not a simple question, actually. It's, it's, it's a very tough question to answer. It's not really about genre. You know, as I said earlier, I really, really was inspired by Kitano Takeshi's、uh, movies, and especially kind of old ones. In his movie, he somehow captured the、um, lunatic type, the, the normal people living in a normal life at one point in their life lose their normality and, and they just show some kind of abnormal side of them. It, that's a kind of hint of show、uh, expression of the abnormality in、uh, Takita no Takashi's movie, and I think that's very, very interesting. So I like to watch that kind of movie. Ah, a t o d e s n e a n j o k e r みたいな a n o n a n t e n d e s a n e Shakai say to Gorak say ga doji ni majitir, Jandu t e n o a s o k u s k i k a m o s h i m a s Actually, like a Joker, the movie Joker, both of the social issues and the entertainment exist in a very high level. That's something I really enjoy watching. Joker is one of the movies that I think, I forget when it came out. Maybe was it during the middle of the pandemic? I can't remember if it was just before or at the start. And I never got a chance to watch it. And it's one of those ones I heard so much good reviews.、Um, I've watched all the Batman movies and a lot of the other comic book movies. So it's kind of something I'm interested in. But I didn't have high expectations for Joker when it came out, but apparently blew everyone's mind in terms of just how good it was.、Uh, Joker was a very good one. It was a very good one. クがまあ起きた頃とか起きてしばらくしてからやっぱ出てきたんじゃないかなというふうに思うんですけども、まあ、あの僕はあのバットマンの映画はすごく好きなので全部今まで見ていてでもこれに関してはそんなにすごく期待はしてなかったんですねところが見てもう,もうぶっ飛んだというかあの本当にすごいなと思って僕もこの映画はとても素晴らしいというふうに思いましたそうですね。あの、やっぱり今ね、アートハウス、いやアート、アートムービーがとても多いんですけど、アートムービーだけですと、さっきほど話に出た多様性
を追求した作品がとても多いんですけど、アートムービーってやっぱり結局映画祭に来る一部の、いわゆるインテリ層の人しか見ない映画が多いと思うんですね。多様性を歌っていながら、見ている層が全く多様、多様に飛んでいない。一般の映画ファンが全く見ない映画っていうのは、まあ、とても増えていて、そういう部分でやっぱり娯楽性も兼ね備えていないと、結局多くの人間が見ないと思っているんで、やっぱりそういう、とても一部の映画祭に向けたアートハウスの映画よりも、僕はジョーカーみたいな、あの、世界中の人が見て、そして考えるっていう映画が好きですね。As we discussed earlier, there are so many movies these days、uh, showing the diversity, but basically they are very limited opportunity to reach out to the people. You know, so they're showing at small theaters,、uh, uh, movie festivals. It means the audiences who have the opportunity to watch that kind of movie are not diverse at all. You know, it's very ironic in that sense. To be able to reach out very diverse audiences, we have to have some kind of entertainment with the movie, even though it's talking about social issues. So,、um, like a Joker, it has both、uh, faces being very entertainment. At the same time, it's talking about some social issues. So, it can reach out great wide audiences, and that's great. Yeah, and that's, I think, one of the, the, the coolest things about movies is that. You can, it, while it is entertainment, there is a way, an avenue, a, a message that can be sent while you're in, enjoying a movie. And I think that's one of the great things about film in general. So, this is the way that the film is a very good thing. It's 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 a very good thing. So,、uh, before we wrap up, it's our last question, I promise. Uh, <laughs>、um, do, do you have a message or some advice for listeners who are interested in getting into the film industry or maybe they want to become a director one day? Do you have any kind of message or advice for them? じゃあ本当にこれが最後の質問になりますけれどもじゃあのこのようポッドキャストを聞いてくださってるあの中には映画界に入りたい監督になりたいっていうふうに思っている方もいらっしゃるかもしれませんのでそういう方にあの内田さんの方から何かメッセージをいただけないでしょうかそうですねあの僕自身も映画を作りたくてで実際に作り始めたのが、まあ、30, 30歳を超えてからなんですでやっぱり今世界中の若い子と話してるとやっぱりその、美術大学を出てないと、なかなか映画の仕事に就けないってことがとても、日本もそうですけど、多いんですね。で、美術大学はお金も高いし、あの、外国だと、まあ日本はね、そんなに難しくないと思うんですけど、まあ外国ですと入るのも難しいところも多いですし、とてもなんかこう、分断化された世界に映画の世界がなっていってると思うんですけど、やっぱそれすごく良くなくて、あのー、別に美術大学とか行かなくても、あの、本当インディペンデントで自分でお金を集めて、あのー、撮りたい映画を撮る。そのためにまあ映画祭がたくさんあって、あの、どんどん、もう自分で撮ってどんどん自分であの映画祭に送っていけば、あのー、いつしか道が開けるんじゃないかなと。まあ僕が実際そうだったんで。I was over 30 years old when I first started really making a movie. You know, it was kind of late start. Yeah.、Um, when I have a lot of、um, different dialogue with the young people in the different countries all over the world,、uh, these days it seems like you have to graduate the art university, have a diploma, then you,、uh, you can get into that. Uh, filming industry and, and those universities is very expensive to go or hard to get in. And then it, it's, it's like、um, filming industry is isolating themselves from the general society. You know, it's a very、um, kind of limited numbers can get into the movie business, and that's really not good. 
you know, I, I was like this, that I started making my own independent movie with the fundings and I keep sending your own independent movies to the different you know, movie uh, festivals. And someday uh, your independent movie, your own movie will be recognized or noticed by someone and your new path of your life will be opening up. So um, don't get discouraged, you know, and just keep trying to make in your own one. そうですね。あの、だから多少お金のかかるインディペンデントムービーがどんどん作りづらくなっている今状態なんで、日本も外国も。すごくビッグバジェットか、スチューデントフィルムかになってきてるのはとても心配です。So, unfortunately, an independent movie with a certain level of funding is very rare to find these days. It's, it's very extreme. One is like super big budget, super big movie, or student movie, you know, low budget ones, and that's really not good. So, that's my concern. But, in Japan, the Midnight Swan, 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 the m i d あの、まあ、インディペンデントムービーとして初めて、あの、日本アカデミー賞が、まあ、その、なんていうんですかね、大きい映画会社じゃない映画に賞を送るのは多分歴史上初めてで、まあ、そういう部分では、ま、少しずつもしかしたら変わっていくのかなという気持ちもあるんで、頑張ってください。My movie,、um, in 2020, The Midnight Swan. Uh, fortunately, that was awarded with the Japanese Academy Awards、uh, for Best Film. And、uh, I believe that's the first independent movie awarded in that、uh, ceremony. You know? So I hope that will be、uh, giving a good turning point to the Japanese movie scenes or movie scenes in general to give more opportunity for independent movies. That's what I'm really hoping. Congratulations again on your award.、Uh, that's fantastic. And, and I can't wait to. To watch some of your work, I'm going to go queue up <laughs> Naked Director tonight after, <laughs> after I put the kids to bed. I'm going to go watch、uh, an episode or two tonight and hopefully、uh, finish it up soon. Thank you very much. I think it's Midnight Swan, the Nihon Academy Show. あの、視聴されて本当におめでとうございます。で、あの、このポッドキャストの録音が終わったら、また、あの、ネイキッドディレクターを僕は<笑>見てです。子供が寝静まった頃に見計らって、<笑>それを見てですね、<笑>でまた楽しみたいなというふうに思ってます。ぜひ、あの、ミドナイさんも、あの、お送りするんで、ぜひ見てください。I will send Midnight Swan to you, so I hope you can watch it and enjoy it. Thank you. じゃあ、これで終わりましょうか。So that's going to be it for today's episode. And thank you again so much, Uchida san, for coming on to our podcast for this very special interview. We're so glad to have you. And also, Yumi san, thank you so much for providing your excellent and awesome translation work for us. You're welcome. あの今日はあのね、本当にありがとうございました。今日は素晴らしいポッドキャストができて、本当に楽しかったです。ありがとうございます。お疲れ様でした。お世話になりました。はい。どうもありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。はい、どうも失礼いたします。ありがとうございます。これで今日のボーナスエピソードが終わります。クルーオブジャパンパーキャストを聞いてくださって誠にありがとうございます。And that's it for today's bonus episode featuring our interview that was in episode 18 of this past season, season three, of the Crew of Japan podcast with our award winning director, Eiji Uchida. In the future, we are planning on having other Japanese spoken interviews with、uh, special guests. So,、uh, to stay up to date, just give us a follow on our social media, which I'll get to in a second. Social media de zehi follow stay kudasai. All right, now my favorite part when I get to spell everything out for everybody. So you can find us on Twitter at K R E W E O F J A P A N, Crew of Japan. On Instagram, Crew of Japan Podcast at K R E W E O F J A P A N P O D C A S T. Then on Facebook, just search Crew of Japan Podcast. Same thing on TikTok, Crew of Japan Podcast. And if you want to send us an email, Feel free, English or Japanese, crew of Japan podcast at gmail.com. Lastly, we are also on Discord. So 
don't forget to check out our show notes for our link tree. We got the link in there on how to join. So that's going to be it for today. Until next time, see you in season four. Mata konone.